Water is life. It sustains every living thing on our planet. From the smallest microorganisms to the largest whales, all life depends on water. Our planet is a unique and beautiful place. It is often called the Blue Planet for a reason. Water covers more than 70% of Earth's surface. It is a precious resource that we must cherish and protect. Water is essential for our survival. We need it to drink, to grow our food, and to maintain our hygiene. Water plays a crucial role in regulating Earth's climate. It helps to distribute heat around the globe. Oceans act as massive carbon sinks, absorbing vast amounts of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. The study of Earth's water systems is fascinating. It helps us understand the intricate connections between the oceans, the atmosphere, and the land. By learning about our planet's water, we can better appreciate its importance and work towards its conservation. The hydrosphere encompasses all the water on Earth. This includes oceans, lakes, rivers, groundwater, ice caps, and even the moisture in the atmosphere. The vast majority of Earth's water, over 96%, is found in the oceans. The remaining freshwater sources, crucial for life on land, make up a much smaller percentage. Oceans are vast, interconnected bodies of salt water. They cover most of the Earth's surface. Lakes are smaller bodies of freshwater or salt water. They can be found inland or near coastlines. Rivers are flowing bodies of freshwater. They originate from higher elevations and flow towards oceans or lakes. Groundwater is water stored beneath the Earth's surface in soil and rock layers. It is an important source of fresh water for many regions. Ice caps and glaciers are frozen masses of fresh water. They are found in polar regions and high mountain ranges. The atmosphere also contains water vapor, which plays a crucial role in weather patterns. The hydrological cycle describes the continuous movement of water on, above, and below the surface of the Earth. It is a closed system, meaning that no water is lost or gained. Water is constantly being recycled through this cycle, driven by solar energy and gravity. The cycle begins with evaporation. Heat from the sun causes water from oceans, lakes and rivers to evaporate into the atmosphere as water vapor. As the water vapor rises, it cools and condenses to form clouds. Clouds are made up of tiny water droplets or ice crystals. When the water droplets or ice crystals in clouds become too heavy, they fall back to Earth as precipitation. Precipitation can take various forms, including rain, snow, sleet and hail. Once precipitation reaches the Earth's surface, it can follow several pathways. It can infiltrate the ground and replenish groundwater, flow over the land as runoff, or evaporate back into the atmosphere, continuing the cycle. Waves are a constant feature of the ocean. They are generated by the wind blowing over the water's surface. The strength of waves depends on the wind speed, duration, and distance over which the wind blows, known as fetch. As wind blows over the water, friction creates small ripples. These ripples grow larger with continued wind exposure, forming waves. Waves have two main parts, the crest, which is the highest point, and the trough, which is the lowest point. The distance between two successive crests or troughs is called the wavelength. Waves can travel thousands of kilometers across the ocean. As they approach the shore, the water depth decreases, causing the wave to slow down and increase in height. Eventually, the wave breaks, releasing its energy onto the shoreline. Waves play a significant role in shaping coastlines, eroding cliffs, and transporting sediment. Section 5. The Moon's Pull Tides Tides are the periodic rise and fall of sea level caused by the gravitational pull of the Moon and, to a lesser extent, the Sun. The Moon's gravity exerts a stronger pull on the side of the Earth facing it, causing a bulge of water. A corresponding bulge occurs on the opposite side of the Earth due to inertia. These bulges of water create high tides. The areas between the bulges experience low tides. As the Earth rotates, 
Different locations experience high and low tides throughout the day. Most coastal areas experience two high tides and two low tides within a 24-hour period. The difference in height between high tide and low tide is called the tidal range. The tidal range varies depending on the location and the alignment of the sun, earth, and moon. Factors like the shape of the coastline and the depth of the water can also influence tidal range. Section 6. The Sun and Moon's Dance. Spring and Neap Tides. The sun also plays a role in influencing tides, although its gravitational pull is weaker than the moon's due to its greater distance from Earth. When the Sun, Earth and Moon are aligned, their gravitational forces combine to produce more extreme tides, known as spring tides. Spring tides occur during new moon and full moon phases. During these times the high tides are higher than usual, and the low tides are lower than usual. Neap tides occur when the Sun and Moon are at right angles to each other, during the first and third quarter moon phases. During neap tides the gravitational forces of the Sun and Moon partially cancel each other out. This results in less extreme tides, with lower high tides and higher low tides compared to spring tides. Spring and neap tides demonstrate the interplay of gravitational forces in our solar system. Section 7. Rivers in the Sea Ocean Currents Ocean currents are continuous, directed movements of seawater within the Earth's oceans. They are driven by various factors, including wind patterns, differences in water density, and the Earth's rotation. Ocean currents play a crucial role in distributing heat around the globe, influencing climate patterns, and supporting marine life. Wind-driven currents are generated by the prevailing wind patterns over the ocean's surface. As wind blows consistently in one direction, it drags the surface water along with it, creating currents. Density-driven currents, also known as thermohaline circulation, are caused by differences in water density due to variations in temperature and salinity. The Earth's rotation also influences ocean currents through the Coriolis effect. The Coriolis effect causes moving objects, including water, to curve to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere. This deflection influences the direction of ocean currents. Section 8 the Gulf Stream and beyond. Notable ocean currents. There are numerous ocean currents circulating around the globe, each with its unique characteristics and influences. One of the most well-known currents is the Gulf Stream, a warm and swift Atlantic Ocean current that originates in the Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf Stream flows northward along the eastern coastline of North America before crossing the Atlantic Ocean towards northwestern Europe carries warm, tropical water to higher latitudes, moderating the climate of Western Europe. Another significant current is the North Atlantic Drift, an extension of the Gulf Stream. The North Atlantic Drift brings warm water and milder temperatures to the northeastern Atlantic, influencing the climates of countries like Iceland, Ireland and the United Kingdom. Other notable ocean currents include the Kuroshio Current in the Pacific Ocean, the California Current, and the Labrador Current in the North Atlantic. Section 9. The Ocean's Influence. Climate and Marine Life. Ocean currents have a profound impact on Earth's climate and marine ecosystems. They act as heat distributors, transporting warm water from the tropics towards the poles and cold water from the poles towards the tropics. This heat exchange helps regulate global temperatures and moderate climate extremes. Ocean currents also influence the distribution of nutrients and oxygen in the ocean, supporting marine life. Upwelling currents bring nutrient-rich water from the depths to the surface, fueling the growth of phytoplankton, the base of the marine food web. Ocean currents create diverse habitats for marine organisms. For example, the Gulf Stream supports a wide variety of marine life, from plankton to whales due to its warm temperatures and nutrient-rich waters. Changes in ocean currents can have significant impacts on marine ecosystems, affecting fish populations, coral reefs, and other marine organisms. 
Section 10. The Future of Our Blue Planet The hydrosphere is a dynamic and interconnected system that plays a vital role in sustaining life on Earth. Understanding the complexities of ocean currents, tides and the hydrological cycle is crucial for predicting and mitigating the impacts of climate change, managing water resources and protecting marine ecosystems. As stewards of our planet, it is our responsibility to protect this precious resource for future generations. By reducing our carbon footprint, conserving water and promoting sustainable practices, we can help ensure a healthy and vibrant hydrosphere for years to come. Let us all be mindful of our actions and work together to safeguard the future of our blue planet.